Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the neon eyes of a neon city, ever staring, ever watching, and it is time for episode 21, or possibly 22, I've lost count, of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So today, pretty much what we're going to be doing is uh, wandering around the citizen apartments again, looking for anything the people have left behind, while I ramble occasionally and with frequent interruption about... Uh, well, my various theories about the game, a, very, very, a couple of critical thoughts that I've had. I know, the self-critical automaton has critical opinions, who could have thought it? Uh, although it's nice to see those back in my brain again after this uh, long period of me being quite ill. I'm still quite ill, but at least I have critical thoughts on occasion. Relic obtained. Tremendous game card. A shooting game called Wonton 51, made by a long defunct game company. Interesting. I like the mech suit on that, it's a nice design. Sort of... Classically anime mech suit, if you will. Allow me to consider such a thing. Uh, so, there's a fairly large section that we haven't seen. These, uh, these sets of apartment houses on the left here. And uh, those apartments over there as well. And I think those ones. And then after that we'll finally be free of this place. And my insane obsession, my frankly, detrimental obsession with uh, rummaging in the bins and finding stuff. As helpful as it may be to an investigator. So the first thing I want to talk about um, is the the one theory of, uh, of the commitment of this crime that I have yet to expound upon, which I've taken to calling domino theory, which is, in short, the idea that uh, nobody really meant for this to happen. Every different character had a different goal and a different plan to achieve that goal. Uh, and when all of those plans happened to go off at the same time, they combined to result in this disastrous result. And I know I just said result twice, don't at me. What's up, Shinji? I like Carmelina's dog. It's about the only thing I do like on this shithole island. You're breaking my heart. Don't get the wrong impression, you're near the top of the good part of the list. Oh, you've made my day, Shinji. Don't patronise me, love dies. I can't get a read on this guy. Does he like me or not? Oh no, is he doing the demon equivalent of, like, when little boys pull people's hair and are like... Is, hmm, is, that, is that explicitly gendered? I think it is explicitly gendered in society. I wonder if that stems from, like boy children being, like, encouraged to not express feelings or whatever. So if they have a feeling, the only expression is through yanking pigtails or whatever. But hey, I'm not great at gender theory. It's not my job to be here. I'm a robot, you know? Like, you that's that's you guys' problem. Uh, so, right. What was I talking about? Domino theory. Ill-fated ring pulls. You can trade in collected ring pulls from drinks to get Crimson Acid merchandise. Looks like someone did not have enough before the island ended. That's a real tragedy. <clears throat> um, although, to be honest, it's a tragedy that is repeated every day in our real lives. I certainly have a large box full of plastic and cardboard trash under my desk that I'm always telling myself I'm going to make dioramas out of, and yet, somehow, uh, this behaviour never does appear. Anyway, so my, the idea behind Domino Theory is that um, nobody killed the council. Everybody did their own uh, highly selfish and unethical plan at the same time. Some people collaborating, some people not. So I suspect that, you know... Like, I don't have any direct evidence to say that this is what's happened, except for the fact that there's kind of evidence that everyone's behind it, but, I, but also I'm disinclined to engage in conspiracism. Like, um, I genuinely for reals think that, you know, maybe Aikiko killed the guards because it was going to be, hey, my, my plan to get you to take my idea that guards should be inducted into the syndicate seriously is to have, look, see, some of them got killed right on the doorstep defending you. Um, and of course that took down the first holy seal and someone else's plan to do something with, to do with the second holy seal destroyed the second holy seal. And so on, so forth, until it all happened to coincide in a kind of disastrous Heath Robinson machine, which, for any Americans watching, is what you guys call a uh, Rube Goldberg machine. That's really a really interesting history to that, but I'll get to it later. 
How did Paradise last so long without an investigator? Makes you think, doesn't it? Untold millennia or a few days. How long were you gone? What happened in your absence? How many hidden crimes are buried beneath these apartments? Again, um, this... So, actually, no. So that I don't forget what I was going to say, I'm just going to point out that um, Heath Robinson was a British cartoonist and uh, Rube Goldberg was an American cartoonist. And r at roughly the same time, in completely separate newspapers, unconnectedly, they started drawing these cartoons about ridiculously convoluted contraptions that do that do silly things. Relic obtained. Fancy playing cards. Good for whiling away time on a rooftop with a friend. Can confirm. Oops. Well, good thing there's no falling damage here in uh, the surprisingly physical, semi-unreal cyber heaven that we dwell. Uh, what the hell was I saying? Oh yeah, Heath Robinson. So they um, they started producing these at roughly the same time. Um, and a lot of people think that there's plagiarism one way or the other, but they're actually just straight up isn't. It's just convergent uh, ideas, you know, they happen to have the same idea at the same time on opposite sides of the planet. What do we get this time? A2. My fourth favourite size of paper, I think. Evening Haze. A grape flavoured carbonated alcoholic drink. It's delicious. Too delicious. Dangerously delicious. Delicious. That one sounds pretty good. Sounds like Monster Energy, but not crap. Actually, no, we already had Monster Energy. <laughs> can't remember what it was called, but I can't be bothered to uh, look it up in the in-game uh, record of every piece of random crap I've found relying on the ground during this investigation. So, yeah, one. Uh, this will tie into some other stuff I want to talk about later. But I want to talk about the way this ga game talks about crime and the idea behind this crime, because it speaks to me very strongly of... Um, Kind of people not really considering the language that they use and what that language means and how it works. Because what is a crime? A crime is not something unethical, and it's not something prescribed by by uh, religion. It's not it's not a bad thing to do, and it is not a uh, a sin. What a crime is specifically is something that the people who run a society have declared to be worthy of punishment. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. There's a lot of things that are that are crimes in society, but that are actually n not wrong at all, you know? There's a lot of extremely hypocritical elements to the way that crimes and uh, the justice system operate in pretty much every part of the world currently. Ego 24-7 by APOC I put my TV on my balcony. We all did. Everyone danced on their balcony. It went on all night. It never happened again. Not super jazzed about that track, it's a bit generic. Relic obtained. Imperfect dominoes. Good for killing time. Seems like a lot of people on these rooftops were killing time. I wonder if that has something to do with... Uh... Well, I feel like there's definitely an intentional goal on the part of the uh, the authors to create a sense of like the ennui and drudgery of being a citizen in this society um but yeah so when different characters in this game say crime my inclination is to believe that they mean different things but i'm not sure that the authors uh are taking that position i have a sneaking suspicion that they are using the word crime to essentially mean bad thing to have done or have ha be happen. Relic obtained. Righteous Montserrat t-shirt. Nice fashion. It's a quote from Montserrat. Praise, purity, perfection. It's kind of a uncomfortably, uncomfortably uh, fascist... Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh. <laughs> It's almost like these balconies aren't designed to be walked across in that uh, in that fashion. Um, except, now there's an interesting thing. As a real place, these balconies would not be designed to be walked across like that. However, as terrain in a video game, they absolutely are, because there's, there's things for you to pick up over there. The developers intend for you to cross that space uh, and pick things up and, and do stuff. 
which um, is something I talk about occasionally when I do these last plays, of the difference between sort of the nature of the places depicted and how they are designed or undesigned or designed to feel undesigned or natural but in ways that feel designed. Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Everywhere you go there's the hum. The whole island hums with something. It is... is it dread? No. Maybe. I think it's secrets. They take on a life of their own and become can tangible. Secrets cause dread? Maybe. Another one of these conversations that feels like it should be interacting with the themes of the story, but also kind of feel a little bit empty. No reality. Made with corn, rye, and barley. Smooth with a taste of brown sugar. Best enjoyed on a rooftop. So these whiskies are definitely something that was available to the uh, citizenry then, not just the upper classes. But yeah, so I think that using the word crime to mean like unethical thing that should not happen is extremely flawed because it builds that association in our minds. The language we use does shape the way we think. I'm not a proponent of the sapir wharf hypothesis, but it's true to some extent that the words we use and what they mean do, um, do have an, uh, an influence on the way we think and the way and the preconceived notions we bring to things. Enchanting blood charm. Everyone plays for good blood. Everyone prays for good blood. Strong blood. Red blood. This charm is said to strengthen your blood. God, I wish I could get my blood strengthened. Um, by which I of course mean the pneumatic fluids that are used to transport to various lubricants to my internal mechanisms. Tragically, being an automaton is uh, no more of an escape from being full of goos than uh, being a human is, apparently. Did I miss anything here? I don't want to get into the habit of using this. Looks like there's a couple up there that I missed. Hmm. So, what was I saying? So yeah, um, I, I think that it's it's questionable. It's an unconsidered use of language. And it would be very easy to tie that into the themes of the game. The idea that the idea of um, ethics and criminality could be a theme that this game wants to interrogate, and or at least think about. But it doesn't seem to be doing that at all. Um, as far as I can tell, it's just being used as a verbal shorthand for uh, something, something bad, something you shouldn't do. Uh, whether that's from the point of view of the government, or the gods, or from individual people. Cheerful Children's Book, an inspirational book about a girl that dreamed of cartoon cakes. Curiously uh, magical tome looking children's storybook. Aha, there it is, there's the other one. I wonder if maybe I should do like a... Like a kind of a roundup at the uh, at the in a couple episodes of things I missed instead of ah tits instead of doing it like this uh, yeah so anyway yeah that mention of um, the concept of criminality um, in fact actually I want to expand on that very slightly more because it's very important to remember that what is and is not a crime can change you know daily if um, if selling selling cannabis is a crime today and it is legalized tomorrow, was it ethically wrong of me to sell yesterday? And is it not ethically wrong of me to sell today? You know, it's it's so, so constructed. And that's not to say that um, morality is is as constructed. I'm not really a moral relativist relativist. Um, although I recognize you know, not to be autistic on main, but I also recognise that none of these things exist in a physical sense. But I think that it's important to have kind of bases for us all to agree to work together in society. You know, that kind of simple homespun wisdom that we all have to we all have to agree to not fuck each other over. Otherwise, you know, why are we even here? We might as well just climb back up in the trees. Um. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Yeah. So, crime and criminality. If you have your, um, have I used this? I have not. 
fast travel run logs. Download skins obtained. Warmth of the moon. The water that reflects the moon is warmer than the surrounding water. You bathe in it for restorative properties. I suppose that's probably true in reality as well. Um, after all, moonlight is reflected sunlight, and it, any form of light will impart energy to the things it strikes. I love that air dash. Uh, right, so I actually had... God damn it, I had a cogent final point to make about the crime and criminality thing. And I've completely got down forgotten what it is. So... I guess I'll just move on to talking about something else. <laughs> Actually, somewhat relevant to that, now that I think about it, is... Uh, is... Uh, poor, sweet, innocent Henry Division. Oh, Gachapon. Lurid Crimson Acid Phone Charm. A crimson acid phone charm, mostly collected by men, but she has quite a few female fans. And we all know why. Um, hint. Homosexuality. Or indeed, heterosexuality on the part of the men who follow her. Well, I mean, on the part of the men who appreciate her in a fandom sort of way? Or a celebrity obsession sort of way? I'm not, I'm not saying anything one way or the other about people who actually physically follow her around, of which I don't doubt there are several. Right, um, but yeah, so uh, Henry Division himself is, quote, a criminal, and there is a conception that this makes him inherently suspect, that the fact that he has been convicted of a crime inherently makes him less trustworthy. But again, like, what is a crime? A crime is just whatever who's in charge says it is. Um, so... I mean, you know, like, in uh, in the UK, it was literally like a criminal offence to tell a child that homosexuality existed, if I remember correctly. Don't, uh, don't at me about how I'm mischaracterising the section 28, was it? I forget. Anyway, uh, my point is that, like, it's very easy to declare something illegal and then punish people for it, and then say, because this person has done something illegal, they are fundamentally a broken kind of a person that can never be trusted. Uh, it happens all the time. And it sucks as a thing to happen in society. And I think it would be cool if this game was interacting with that in some way as well, but I, I just have this strong suspicion that it's not, really. Um, the idea about whether or not because uh, the thing that the thing that um, we were able to say to Henry is you're not a criminal, you're a victim but the real question is, is criminal even a category that we should be applying? Like, is it a category that we should be considering, factoring into anything? We do need a word that means, you know, person who did bad thing but I think that um, I think that it ultimately ends up reinforcing some things that uh, it should instead be critiquing, and I'm surprised that it doesn't seem to be critiquing. Let's put it that way. And um, so there's this kind of I think to some extent it wants to comment on it because there is this odd superposition to Henry Division. There's this idea that he is kind of held in this tension where he's he's responsible for something that was completely inescapable and unavoidable, supposedly. You know, what mortal can possibly resist um, demonic influence when they're so much bigger and more powerful? Um, but then also, the fact that he was suborned is itself treated as a justification for him being considered a criminal. So he's, he's kind of held in this cycle where he's criminalized for something inescapable, but then because he's a criminal, he's blamed for succumbing to the inescapable in the first place. One of the recurrent themes throughout this game is this idea that uh, criminality is uh, a manifestation of misery and um, abnormal butterfly. What makes this abnormal? Look at it. If you can't tell, you weren't meant to know. And so um, the idea of it's just, it's strange. <sighs> There's this idea that no, I think I've got it. So, 
The theme of this game, as it seems to be presented so far by a lot of the stuff we've run into, is that people do criminal things when they are miserable. And capitalism makes people miserable. A controlling society that traps you into a system you cannot escape and punishes you for being in it. It, it makes people miserable. And it's true that it does. But that, it's not a side effect, you know? Um, it's... What, what the game fails to understand, what, what, this, what this work fails to talk about, at least so far, is the idea that um, that's on purpose, you know? It's part of what keeps us held in this system. Um, it's not simply that um, criminality occurs due to the misery of being trapped in this system. It's that criminality is constructed on purpose to keep people trapped in the system. Um, which... And the misery itself keeps people trapped in the system. It's like... I don't know. Uh, I I had a whole way I was going to phrase that that made a lot of sense. And as I walked up these stairs, it just dribbled out of my ears and onto the desktop. Uh, it's going to take a while to clean that out of my headphones, which is extremely irritating. Because I've only got the one pair. Polished badge. Insignia of a crime clan. Ruled by Crazy Davos, a fearful woman with an eye patch, Not one to be messed with. Yeah, uh, hmm. Well, there are a fair few other things I wanted to talk about, but I have done nothing but ramble about criminality and the, the concept of it. So, um, I think perhaps my other concepts will be talked about next episode. But for now, uh, I'm just going to have a rummage around on a couple more rooftops. I wish I could remember which god that is. It always feels relevant whenever I find secret shrines. Relic obtained. Wistful Lover's Padlock. A padlock that symbolises endless love between two people. Hmm. That's a tradition from real life. In various different places. Man, that air dash is coming in, inc coming in incredibly handy. Is there anything up here? Hmm. Oh, now that I have the air dash, maybe I can get on top of the uh, the Marshall building. I know there's there's got to be some kind of a secret way in, and there's probably something to do with a statue. Maybe, somewhere? How about this parkour, baby? Relic obtained. Nostalgic Fallen Rose. Who knows where it fell from? Who knows who dropped it? I hope the rose made someone happy. I feel like this definitely... I'm just... I'm not really doing rhyme or reason. Previously I was being very careful to, like, search out each area's uh, many secrets, but this time... I don't know. There's just so many of the damn things. Oh, there was straight up a Shinji there, which I saw and was going to talk to, and then completely forgot about. Is this the work of a god? This is no damned harmony. This is human through and through. I can smell it. Are you sure? There's something rotten in the mix, but gods have bigger interests than you people. Hmm, weird. So I think we'll have a rummage around and explore up this building next with its... Remarkably sinister lower story, unlike the other one, which just had a nice butterfly garden. Over here we have a hell of a lot of uh, silent goat memorabilia. Silent goat memorabilia, which is also the name of my indie rock band. So, um... That's going to be it from me for today. I'm sorry that I lost the thread a little bit there at the end. I uh, I definitely had some cogent points I was working towards, but um, God help me, I cannot remember what they are now. Can I make it onto the roof? Yeah, hell yeah. Parkour! Right, so yes, that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, and join me again next time where there will be more of something... Maybe I'll go talk to Witness, finally. Maybe I'll do a little bit more of exploring here. I don't know. There will probably be more uh, fairly spurious critical takes. So um, if you enjoy those, come back and enjoy those, I guess. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.